Hi, this is Dr. Eric Westman and today's Ask Adapt topic is insulin resistance. So I thought I'd come to simplify the whole insulin resistance idea into a model based on a sink. Insulin resistance demonstration. The sink water is the level of glucose in the bloodstream. The faucet is the flow of glucose into the bloodstream. The drain is insulin helping the glucose leave the bloodstream and it goes into the cells. An open drain is being insulin sensitive. A closed drain is being insulin resistant. So here is someone eating lots of carbohydrates. If you have insulin sensitivity, the water, the glucose just goes into the cells and never really builds up in the bloodstream. So that's a normal situation. Now, as the insulin resistance builds up, meaning there's a harder time getting the glucose into the cells, or the drain is closing, then glucose builds up in the blood. And that is normal after a meal, normal if you're eating carbs. Um, and this is where the beginning of diabetes comes from. This is insulin resistance, where the drain isn't working quite right. Uh, the body sends out more insulin to get the drain to work better, but it's having trouble because it's not working right. And oh, so what's confusing about this whole model is if you just look at the glucose level, which is the level of the water on the sink, it doesn't really tell you about the insulin resistance, which is the drain situation. Because if you lower the carbs that you eat, or fast, don't eat anything, you lower the input. Now I haven't changed the insulin sensitivity at all, the drain, but the level of glucose goes down. So if you're trying to lower the glucose, you want to put less glucose into the, the system or eating less. So if you're keto, you know, it never goes to zero because your body is always making some glucose. But you can see that the water level, the glucose level, went down without really changing the drain. Okay. So now you can exercise, you can take pills to change the drain. And so a lot of people will just consume carbs and just take medicine to open the drain or, or, or exercise more or do lots of crazy things, take supplements and all that. But why not just lower the glucose going into the system? So that's the model of insulin resistance where this is the drain is actually the insulin on the cells helping the the insulin uh, helps the glucose into the cells or out of this sink and then the amount of sugar or glucose going in remember starches get digested the glucose the starches will add to the glucose in the system just like that but it's complicated in that if you just look at the water level or the glucose level it doesn't really tell you about insulin resistance so that's where the insulin level in the blood comes in in these blood tests um, Tom, when you um, quantify insulin resistance, most people use the combination of glucose level and insulin level, and you can see it's still it's not a great uh, way to uh, tell you how that drain is. Um, another big point with all these questions is that um, if you compare yourself to the normal, quote, normal range on the, the lab report, those were the normal, quote, normal ranges in people who are eating carbohydrates. And just like if you're in ketosis all day long, you're in nutritional ketosis, you're abnormal on the lab report, you may find these uh, the numbers that you get don't fall into that normal range for people eating carbohydrate, and that's just fine. Um, so uh, some great questions. You know, I've been doing keto for over four years, uh, Karen, and my A1C is 5.3. Why isn't it in the fours? Again, that's that situation where I'm not sure the A1C or the blood glucose among carb eaters is actually going to be the optimal for those of us who don't eat carbohydrates. Uh, Julie asks, uh, how long does it take to become insulin sensitive if you are insulin resistant and when eating a ketogenic diet? And um, as you can see, if you have diabetes, and, and that means you have a really bad state of insulin resistance, the, the, the drain is pretty much clogged. <laughs> um, you can see some of that gumming in there, clogging the drain. Um, and so if you have insulin resistance and you have diabetes and you're eating carbs, 
you're, in a, you're like this. So you, your glucose level is really high. Now you can cut the carbs down, and that's lowering the water going in, but the blood glucose doesn't normalize because you still have insulin resistance. Now that insulin resistance might take days, it might take weeks, it might take months, and some people with severe diabetes and with hundreds of pounds to lose, that insulin resistance may take years to resolve. So what we see over time is that the insulin resistance does resolve when you treat the underlying obesity or underlying root cause, and then the blood sugars will normalize. But I'm sad to, or the realistic uh, thing is that it might take a long time for the underlying insulin resistance to resolve. How do I know for sure if I am insulin resistant? Well, as you can see in this model, you want to make sure that you're first stopping the input of carbohydrate to the system and then measuring the insulin level is the best way to know if you're insulin resistant. Um, what about insulin levels? They, they seem to go all over the place in the 20s, the 30s. These are all pretty much the same range in reading and, and there's a variability in the insulin when you check it. I hope that's helpful. Again, this is the insulin resistance um, demonstration. Now, it's even more complicated than this, I hate to tell you, because what if there's something under the drain clogging it? So for you experts out there, what is the possibility? What could be the analogous thing in the human body that's clogging the drain? And we'll get into that on the next Ask Adapt video.